You know, we, uh, we salute the heroes. We salute the veterans. I do it on the show every day. I don't care what your political affiliation is. Uh, the first responders, the men and women in uniform. And, you know, we've had a lot of protests throughout the country. But I always emphasize this on the show. Yes, there are a small minority of cops that are bad apples, bad cops. I, I, yes. But I've always also said that I support the police. And I'm, the majority of police officers are good people and they're heroes. And every single time I have an opportunity to shake a police officer's hand, I thank them for what they do. And it means something to them. I know it does because they tell me it does. And they risk their lives for this country, just like the men and women in uniform. Uh, we were just talking about Tammy Duckworth. And Shea Michelonis is no exception to that. A young man who had his whole, has his whole life in front of him, right? And, you know, all he is doing is his job on the night of a Black Lives Matter protest. He's just making an arrest. He's doing his job. He was a, he's a good cop. And some buffoon decides to fire his weapon, shoots uh, Officer Shea in the neck. It is amazing uh, that he is still with us and, and continuing to recover. And the man joining us on the line right now, nice enough to, to be with us. Obviously, he and his family has been, been through a lot. Uh, Frank Michelonis, uh, who is Shea's uncle. Frank, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me, Brian, and thanks to your listeners. Sure, absolutely. It's an honor to have you on. Uh, I'm trying to think of where I start with this interview, and I guess uh, what I would like to start with is, is what I think is the most important thing. Can you give us an update on how Officer Shea is doing? I understand he was transported to another facility. Uh, how is he doing? How is his health right now? Is he improving? Well, yeah, so his situation is the goal was when he was at the UMC Trauma Center was just to get him stable enough to transport him to the next level. And it was touch and go for a while up and down. But we got him, you know, his fevers were spiking and infection happened. And we finally got him after a month uh, at UMC, who did a wonderful job. I mean, I just have the world to say about UMC there in Las Vegas. Um, they got him transported to a rehab facility that, the, that specializes in spinal cord injuries. And so where he is right now is, I mean, I mean just to kind of recap, you know, unfortunately, my nephew is paralyzed from the neck down. He's got, uh, you know, a breathing tube and will have a breathing tube the rest of his life. So his next level of care is basically just trying to train him how to communicate with his eyes, with a chart, looking. They calibrate this rehab facilities, um, you know, wonderful. They calibrate your eyes to look at charts and things. And really, we're just, that's where we are right now is um, just trying to get him to communicate and what his, his wants and needs are. You know, another unfortunate level of complication with my nephew, he got shot starting through the jaw and went through and snapped the spinal cord, the bullet, is that his jaw is wired shut. He had surgery on his jaw, so he can't even open his mouth. So that's just another Ugh. level of him being uncomfortable. So um, that, that's where we are. It's just like uh, a heartbreaking uh, situation and, and scenario. But, um, I'm you so know, sorry. I just, I'm, I'm, you know, that's I'm, where it, we are. It pains me to hear these details. It is a miracle that he is still alive. But it pains me to hear what you're talking about right now. Obviously, his life has changed forever. Oh, I, don't, I mean, it's just it's horrible. Is he able to do you, is he able to open his eyes? And do you think he recognizes you and your family? Is he able to do that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So he's responding. His, his uh, mental capacity is there. Uh, he spells his name out on the chart. He knows who wow. he is. Um, you know what? When he he has emotions, he cries. Um, you know, he's. He's self-aware. Um, you know, when his squad, when they gave him that wonderful send-off uh, to get him to the next level, or the police send-off, his squad came to the uh, inside the ambulance, and he smiled at all of them. You know, we showed him the Vegas Golden Knights signed jersey of all the players. He had a big smile on his face. So he has emotions. He's alive. You know, he is 100% there. So Boy, he what a tough kid. what's going on. What a tough kid. At, at least I, I, that I'm happy to hear that, that he's able to show some emotion and at least he's able to recognize you guys. And he knows that the city of Las Vegas, everyone is behind him. Uh, and uh, we hope that he continues to be as, as comfortable as he can under these circumstances. My goodness. But at least a positive note, he's been transported to a facility, like you said, that specializes in spinal cord injury. That's really important. I have to ask yeah. you a little bit, Frank, about that fateful night, and I know it's probably difficult for you and your family to talk about. 
We hear a lot of rumors in the news of what may or may not have happened. What do you think happened that night? Yeah, this is this is my speculation, and it's going to be you know played out in the court of law. Um, you know what? I, I I try to take at face value. Like I, I I really don't believe it was a Black Lives Matter protester. I think it was someone that was trying to jump in on it. Uh, this individual was a 20 year old individual from across the street who just wanted to go out and do some harm that night. And that's what, what he did. I, I think he was just a, kind of a lone wolf that was going to try to mask himself in with protesters. And he was out to do some damage, and he did. And that, that's my opinion. Like I say, I'll play out in the court. I agree. But that's, that's what uh, – yeah. I, I fully – you know, I heard, I heard some rumors that said he's trying to break up the crowd and firing a gun. Right. He, no. No, that's not it. He wanted to do some damage. That's my opinion. And I don't tag him. And I love the fact that you guys don't make it political, and and we're all about Shay and not political. And I'm not tagging this that this was a protester. You know, this was was someone that was trying to jump in on on something and wanted to do harm and try to blend in. And And I have no doubt that – I I couldn't agree with you more. And I have no doubt if it wasn't Officer Shea uh, in this animal's life, it probably would have been somebody else. And and that's – sadly, it was Officer Shea. Uh, But uh, I have to ask you this. I mean, eventually this man is going to be sentenced. I hope he gets the rest of his life in prison. I don't like to use the word justice because obviously your family will never be the same. Officer Shea's uh, quality of life will never be the same. Do you, what do you see as any form of justice here uh, for the shooter? You know what? I, we are, we haven't gone there. My family hasn't gone there. We're all about Shay right now, and we just haven't we just haven't gone there. All of our efforts have been in what we can do for Shay to get him to have the best quality of life. And and I have full faith that this is going to play out and justice will be served. But I we're, the family just doesn't have a vendetta. You know, we just sure. we're, we're we're all about Shay right now. And I, I will tell you, this has been a horrible tragedy for my family, but the people of Las Vegas, I, I, I'm from Washington, D.C., so I flew out the day he got shot. I was there three weeks. Um, you know, I have a family back home in the D.C. area, and the people of Las Vegas, what, I, I, I mean, we get choked up talking about it. The absolute, um, the community you have, the amount of support you had for Shea, it's been incredible. Like, like it is such a town. I am such a fan of Las Vegas. Um, I mean, from everybody coming in from all over, um, you know, the day he was shot, I think the next day, there's this big, beautiful RV outside the hospital for my family to use. It was like a $650,000 RV, and it's like, it's there for your family as well. And they put it there for as long as Shay was there a month. We didn't even know who did it. We had to do research, and it was like Finley wow. RV, this uh, manager named Ruben gave us this rv and and we That's went great. finally my brother and i went to thank him um the the vegas golden knights because shay's played we're a hockey family we're originally from michigan shay's played hockey vegas since he was three um the golden knights have been phenomenal with not just the jerseys and that but just just the support your own you know i the general manager george mcphee of the golden knights your owner bill foley has been amazing. He's just a quiet person that does things quietly. He's been amazing. You really have a community there. You have an um, uh, awesome community. And the people that came out, I I just, I am such a fan of Las Vegas and and people there. And I don't think people realize, I think people go fly in, have a good time, party, you know, go to the casinos and fly home. And they have no clue about what the community of Vegas is. And I, right. and, I and my whole right. family spread out. I, I just yeah, I sing agree. your praises. Yeah, I'm, I agree. I'm a big and, fan of Las Vegas. I agree. And what you said about Foley, I once played a round of golf with him, uh, the uh, owner of the Vegas Golden Knights. You'd never know the guy was worth a gazillion dollars. He's just an everyday, regular, kind of quiet but yeah. friendly man. Yeah. And, and I couldn't agree with you more about that. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Frank Michelonis. He is uh, Shea Michelonis' uncle. Of course, Shea tragically shot in his neck. Uh, you know, after, uh, during a Black Lives Matter protest. So, Frank, you talked a little bit about, and I agree with everything you said, by the way, about Las Vegas and the community coming together. A big, big showing of that was not just uh, the support for Shea, but October 1. And I think what people don't realize about Shea is that he was very, very early on the job. He was new on the job as a police officer, and he was one of the responding officers on October 1. And maybe you could share this story because my understanding is that night he left his phone somewhere 
and then you guys yeah. and the family were calling him that night because you thought he could have been one of those people shot. Can you just talk about that? Uh, yeah, I remember that like it was uh, two weeks ago. Um, Shay was very new on the force, and he was driving the squad car, I think, by himself for one of the uh, few times, and he got a call. He happened to be very close to Mandalay Bay. Um, what he told his father, my brother, was that, Dad, I'm, I'm working tomorrow, and then I'm getting off at this time, and I'm going to that concert right by the Mandalay Bay. So he was going to go to the concert right after so what happened is he left his phone in his locker, usually has it on him. Uh, we heard the shooting broke. We've been trying to get get a hold of him for hours. We thought he was at that concert. His brother, who's a police officer, went to all the hospitals to, to, to try to find Shay, thinking he was shot. Um, it was a very hectic five hours for our family. And I just remember I was at work, and I was doing a meeting, and I pulled out of the meeting, and and evidently what happened was he left the phone in and he got called and he went around the, the backside of Mandalay Bay. He was one of the first responders there. They were going to send him up. To, they told him where the shooter was. And then the SWAT team came, which I'm very grateful for because he was very young at the time, um, still is. And he was at, in the lobby of the Mandalay Bay and just t- like all the people coming in that were shot were coming into the lobby. And that was – it wow. was just uh, – you know, horrifying experience. We were happy he was okay. It was we were sad for the city, and and so we thought, wow, we well, that was a really close call. And so, God, we we remember that horrible tragedy like it was last last week. Oh my God, that is unbelievable. I mean, you know, you talked about how Vegas comes together uh, in tragedy, and I think that day, that night, as as horribly tragic as it was, what is it, fifty eight people that lost their lives. Uh, it showed the good people of Las Vegas that Las Vegas isn't just about the strip and partying and gambling. It's a community, and it's a tight community. A lot of people know one another in this city. I've been here 20 years, and uh, whether it's uh, you know the worst uh, you know mass shooting in the history of this country, or it could be an officer that gets shot uh, in in the sad situation that your family has had to go through. Uh, we see the good of, of Las Vegas people. We really do. And I'm going to tell you something, and I'm sure you would agree with me, Frank. I've lived in other parts of the country. Yes, there are good people everywhere, but there certainly are a hell of a lot of good people in Las Vegas, and they show it during difficult times. Absolutely. Um, I just love your city. And, and, everyone was, and everyone was so respectful. Even your press was so respectful of my family. And, and, and that doesn't happen around the country. My sister was, has worked for ABC News for years. She was a reporter, and, and she's like, yeah, that doesn't happen around the rest of the country. Like, nobody right. camped out at our house. Nobody camped out. No, everyone was so respectful. I kept in touch with them. They texted me, is it okay if we mm-hmm. to do this? Like, they always were in touch with us, even before they put anything to print. And I have just, I mean, so much respect for the city. It, it, it's just a unique community. And mm-hmm. I kind of wish the rest of the uh, rest of the country well, was like uh, Las Vegas. Right well, now. it's because it's because we all have respect for your nephew and, and what he did, putting his life on the line. And we all have sympathy and uh, empathy for what your family has gone through. It's only the right thing to do. And I want to ask you a little bit uh, a little bit more about your nephew Shay. Uh, do you? I guess it's a two part question. Uh, do you remember the last conversation you guys had, and uh, you know, before this incident, and and maybe you could shed some light on why he wanted to become a police officer? Yeah. So the last time I saw him, I live in the D.C. area, as I said, and we always try to get together. I had a conference in San Diego uh, months ago, and he joined me with his brother, and that they uh, they drove, and so uh, we went on the beach. And, and Shay was a is a great athlete. Um, always has been great skater. Uh, we were playing a little touch football on the beach with my two boys, and uh, you know Shay's catching balls one handed. He just always was a naturally great athlete. Um, he's a soft spoken, salt to the earth young man. He loved to read. Uh, he was always reading, and um, you know he just went into his brother. He just you know wanted to, to help people, and you know I I always said you know if this is a day dangerous job uh, and we always worried about him we worry about his brother this is a dangerous job and then when other situations come about it makes it more dangerous and we do realize and I and you said at the beginning of, of the you know before, on the call is that 
Yeah, we when when there's a bad cop out there, it makes good cops jobs even harder and makes everyone's yeah. life yeah. miserable. And yeah. so, you know, I worry about we always worried about that. It's like, you know, we it's just you know, you have really good officers, but you get some bad apples and it makes it a, a tough job even more difficult. And so, you know, we would just you know, he was just a soft spoken, really sweet young man. Yeah, and, and, and I've talked to other people. I remember I went to uh, one of the fundraisers that you guys put on uh, right down the street from the radio station where we're at, by the way. I believe it was on Sahara. And I went to this fundraiser, and I bought one of these shirts, uh, you know, a, a Shea Michelona shirt in support of him. And I saw all the people there, and I saw all the police officers that were buying shirts. I saw regular, everyday people that, you know, they didn't, they didn't know your nephew personally, but they wanted to go there and, and show support. And in this time of crisis, and I'm sure you would agree, we have a lot of racial divide in this country right now, a lot of political divide in this country right now. We're in the midst of a pandemic. But I said to a couple of my friends when we went to this fundraiser, I said to them, I said, you know, isn't it nice that we're all here not talking about politics, not talking about race? We're all here for one reason, to show support for who, a, a, a young man who is a hero to show support for someone who was injured on the job, and we're all here for one main cause. And I'll tell you, in the last several months, it's hard to find moments like that. And I, I felt it felt really good to be there and all be together. It didn't matter what we looked like or the color of our skin or what our political affiliation was. We all looked at each other and we all understood why we were there, and that was to port, uh, support your nephew. And and I thought that was I thought that was very special. And I'll tell you, it was moving to me and, and meant a lot to me just to be able to be there. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you, I went to three, I was at three fundraisers and, and it was all about uh, Shay and, and the officers and just support. You're right. I, I didn't see any political shirts, any, it, nothing like that. And it was about Shay and, you know, it, 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 you have some really special folks there in, in Las Vegas and, and I, I just can't say en uh, enough about it. And, and it was, it was about the support. And, and I shared that with the squad and because I met with them, I met some wonderful people and the police department has been wonderful in supporting us as well. Anything we needed, um, everyone has. And I said, look, you have a lot of support in the city. And um, so I just want to pass that on. That wasn't just for Shay. That was for, you know, what everyone does. And so yeah, um, yeah. You, you, you just have a wonderful city. I appreciate I appreciate you saying that. And it's, it certainly sounds to me like you have a, a wonderful family and a very strong family. And I want to uh, do everything I can to help you. Uh, your family and Shay during this difficult time. And, uh, you know, we had uh, some uh, somebody from the Metro Police Department that was on our show several weeks ago, and they were looking for a spot for the fundraiser. And it just so happened that one of our listeners uh, uh, worked uh, it, it, there at that parking lot uh, where they had a fundraiser on Sahara. And, and because we had one of our listeners, uh, they were able to, you know, have one of those fundraisers there. And that felt really good that one of our listeners was able to do that. But I want to continue that. I want to, we want to do whatever we can to help. So can you share some information with us, Frank? If people, whether it's a donation, whatever the case may be, if people want to help your family out in any way that they can, how do they go about doing that? Well, first, we want to thank everybody who's, who's the support, not just the financial, but that as well, but the emotional, everything. Everyone's been wonderful. But, um, uh, you know, if anyone, you know, has the need or want, wants to donate, they can go to, it's, it's the Injured Police Officers Fund. So it's IPOF.Vegas. And that's a nonprofit fund. And that's set up. And, and you go right to that, IPOF.Vegas. And there's Shay's photo right on it. And you can... Uh, click on donate now. There is also one authorized GoFundMe account set up by Mike Hawk. Um, so GoFundMe Mike Hawk, and that's a, that's a fund there that's legit. So any one of those places. As far as future fundraisers, it's on hold now. We know things are getting you know with COVID and that, and I think they're we're just they're just sitting back. But uh, again, whether you donate or not, thank you for your support. Thanks. Thanks to all your listeners. I mean, you, the family cannot thank you enough. And, and as we said, our family believes in paying it forward. If, if for some reason, um, whatever, whatever happens with the outcome with Shay, if, if we have any funds left over, it's going to be, do every penny is going to be donated back um, to the IPOF and, and pay it forward oh, to all those great. You know, kind people. So we that's... are not going to profit one penny off of it. We are so grateful 
for the support that we have and have gotten. I mean, really, my it, it, it breaks my family up in tears uh, of all the support we got from Vegas. Well, you guys deserve it. You guys deserve it, quite frankly. Very, very classy of you and your family. And uh, I, I cannot thank you enough. I'm so sorry the pain and suffering that your family and Shay is going through. It would certainly be an honor and a privilege uh, one day to be able to meet you, your family, and to meet Shay one day and just to be able to say thank you to him. Thank you for what he did, and thank you for being a hero. Frank, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time uh, to join us. Yeah, I want, I want to thank you. I want to thank your radio station and for reaching out. I mean, you were responsible for getting us that first site. And, Brian, I want to thank you and your station and, and all your listeners. And I'll, I'll tell you this. I've been a Washington Capitol season ticket holder for 17 years, and I'm a Vegas Golden Knights fan now. Oh, I like it. You know, I watched the Capitals play the Vegas Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup Finals, and uh, I was a big Peter Bondra fan back in the day, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. we're, going, we're going back a ways, but uh, yeah. you got a, you got a great city there, great basketball, great hockey city. Uh, and of course, uh, you got the NFL. So it's it's a great sports town. But Frank, it'd be, it'd be an honor to meet you someday, uh, you and your family. And uh, thank you again they, for your. They time. also happen to have the World Series champion. Now. Oh yeah. Well, I don't. I'm not a baseball. <laughs> unless player. you're an Orioles fan. <laughs> unless you're an Orioles fan, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, I'm a Nats fan, but I don't want to. I don't want to bring. I don't want to bring that up to the wonderful city of Vegas. I have a feeling you're going to get all, all the sports teams and. Uh, uh, you know, Fair I, enough. I a quick story. If we got 30 seconds, I have, a, I have sure. a, a nine-year-old who's played hockey, ice hockey for five years, born in Washington, D.C., played ice hockey in the D.C. area, and he's been a Golden Knight fan, and he wears the jerseys. We took him to one game in Vegas, and he goes, Dad, I go, I have season tickets to the Caps. You've been to the Caps game your first 20 games of your life. What happened? He goes, the Golden Knights just have it going on, Dad. They just have it going on. The <laughs> hey, that's a smart nine-year-old kid, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Frank, thank you so much so. For, uh, for for talking to us, man. I really appreciate your time and look forward to meeting you down the road, okay? Me too. Thank you for having me. The family you appreciates bet. it. And you all bet. It's, an, thank it's you. an honor. It's an honor. Thank you very much. That is Frank Vicolonis. Um, I just, uh, it just, it just breaks my heart. When I hear of this 29-year-old who, uh, it sounds to me, will never walk again, uh, will be on a ventilator for the rest of his life. And I think about, you know, what would I be going through if that was me? What, what would I be going through if that was a member of my family? And I, I have no words. I just, I, I just, I just don't know what to say, and I understand that during this time, the Black Lives Matter protest and the anger we have for some police officers, a small minority of them, we should also have that type of anger towards people who hurt police officers. We should also have that anger for that piece of human scum who almost killed Shea Michelonis and ruined his life, ruined his quality of life forever, a 29-year-old who did absolutely nothing wrong. And when I hear from his uncle, who said that he'll never walk again, it just it just gets me emotional, and it, it breaks my heart because uh, no good person deserves that to happen to them. You know, nobody nobody deserves that to happen. And we've all had tragedy in our lives, right? I know I've had mine. With, with incidents that have happened to members of my family. But, you know, among all the, the, the politics that we talk about on this show every day and and the left, the right, uh, you know, we, whether I'm bashing Donald Trump or somebody calls in and, and calls, you know, I call somebody an idiot. Uh, it's all relative when you think about a, a great human being and someone who, who, a person in uniform, a police officer who, who will never be able to be a cop again, who probably will never be able to walk again, uh, who may never be able to get off of a ventilator again. And it, it just, it just, it just gets me choked up, man. It just breaks my heart. And even though he's on the ventilator and he's paralyzed, he could still uh, manage a smile uh, to his family. So that I, was amazing. I'm, I'm gonna. I, I don't know if. I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if it's it's worse to be able to know the condition you're in. I don't know. But anyway, we we thank. Uh, Frank's Frank uh, Michelonis for joining us.